There's definitely something to the idea in this movie, that as we grow up not only do our existing emotions get more sophisticated, but new ways of expressing and feeling seem to pop up every few years. We got a glimpse of nostalgia a few times in the course of the movie, but certainly pride and passion are still packing their bags and waiting for the right opportunity to invade headquarters. Two very important messages came through in this movie. The first message is about not letting your anxiety drive. This is a message I can definitely get behind. I've told my two greatest fears before. My greatest fear, without any doubt, is burying another child. My second greatest fear is leaving my disabled son alone in the world without me there to care for him. When sharing our greatest fears was used as a team building exercise a few years back, a coworker commented, There's no happy ending for you, is there? No good death after a good life? Just one bad end or another? And in a way, they were right. But there are lots of really good middles. This year, I've been focused on getting the social services set up that my son will need going forward, and it's been kind of stressful at times. Today, I'm taking the practical exam for my CNA, because as a CNA I'll be able to direct his care better. I'll have more authority, and I'll have more skills. Actually, I have the skills, that's why I'm testing, but you know what I mean. During the education process, it's come up a few times that I'm not a good fit for a career in nursing. I'm not a people person. I'm not a check the boxes person. I'm more of a get it done and go home type. All the personality tests say that I should stay as far away from nursing as humanly possible. And yet, I am very much a do right by my kids type. There are vanishingly few people I trust more to be in charge of my son's daily activities than myself. I love seeing my son light up when we get to the zoo, or a movie he's been wanting to see, or to a social event he's been excited to go to. As much work as I put into him, I want to be there when he gets what he wants. I know for sure that there's a scary day coming. I don't know which scary day it will be, but there aren't a lot of non-scary options if I look too far ahead. So I don't look that far ahead. I focus on things that are a lot more short-term, and among those, there are lots of happy moments. I'm looking forward to seeing several movies with my son, and every time I start to worry that there will never be another movie to compete with the last favorite, a new trailer drops that's even more of the type of movie he would enjoy than I ever thought possible. I look forward to more adventures meeting Bigfoot hunters and exploring Bigfoot lore with him. I look forward to hearing the stories he makes up and the plans he makes with friends. Even if there's a scary future coming, it's not today. Today there are things that I can do, specifically, do well on my test, that will make the middle between now and then not only more enjoyable, but enough more enjoyable as to be worth the big scary part at the end. Of all the things this movie has to say, that's by far the most important and the least interesting. Now that I'm done with the boring public service announcement, let's get to the part you really came for. No one comes to my blog for that hippy-dippy, feel-good stuff. Far more interesting is the way that Joy sought to manipulate Riley's sense of self by just pushing memories that didn't fit with the sense of self Joy was making to the back of the mind. And my oh my how I've seen this. At one point in my life, I was remodeling my bathroom running a kung fu school, raising a developmentally disabled son, and working full time with a two hour commute all at the same time. I would tell people that I didn't like being busy all the time. Then I realized one day that if I really didn't like it, I would change it. A few years later, I really did change it. I really did cut back on things that were making me busy against my will. I couldn't have done that without the self-reflection to realize that I was actually in control. I could say no to a remodel, to the kung fu school, to my job. Now, I make the effort to upload something to my blog twice a week, Thursday something light based on a movie, and then Saturday something that's weighing on me from my theological journey. But I've given myself permission to miss a day. 
it's been a long time since that happened. But if you flip back through the Thursdays, I'll bet dollars to donuts, you can tell which weeks I've had time to pull my thoughts together and which weeks I'm struggling to make it on time. I'm okay with something that's two paragraphs saying barely more than what I liked in a movie, if getting that out reduces my stress instead of increasing it. If it would increase my stress, then I'll skip it. That's also why sometimes, it feels like I cut off in the middle of a thought. I'll get just enough thought out to keep it from weighing me down then bedtime.